Well, uh, Kenya rugby in the last few years has just been going down, has lost cred credibility with the sponsors, with the players. So I think the time is right now to actually clean up uh, stuff and bring back rugby the way it's supposed to be. Right now, um, it's a whole mess at the Kenya Rugby Union. Uh, credibility is gone, sponsors have left, uh, players do not trust the union, and the players are a very important part of rugby. You can't have rugby without the players. The fans are also disappointed uh, at the way uh, the union has been run. It's lack of leadership, so I'm coming to provide that leadership that is needed to bring back rugby where it's supposed to be. When we come back uh, to the union, we are going to, because uh, uh, these sponsors have worked with us before and they trust us. So when we left, um, a whole lot of them also left after the new, new board came in in uh, 2014. And, uh, you know, the people, there were directors who abused sponsors, you know, it's uh, recorded. Um, they ran Safari Servants at a loss uh, in 2014. I think they made over 25 million loss. The last time Safari Servants made a profit and was in 2013 when we had Safaricom on board. So all these big corporates uh, left Bamburi, Safaricom, Sportspesa came in after and left again in a half. Um, you know, we had uh, uh, Magical, I think uh, the, the, the Ministry of, tu of Tourism was also sponsoring Kenya Rugby. There was a debacle last year when the team covered uh, their shots because there was mis the, the money went into <laughs> To, uh, to plug a hole at the bank. So it's just a loss of credibility and what we are seeking to do is for me to come in with a group of good directors. I cannot just do this myself. So the whole board, the current uh, directors who, who will be left there, as well as the new, four new directors who are gonna come in. We have to work as a team to restore credibility and that's what matters. That's what, so every weekend uh, as, as now fans of rugby, we are sending Mpesa to clubs, it's not sustainable. Every weekend, most clubs, the big names, even the smaller teams in the Championship and Kenya Cup as well, they're calling and uh, you have to send Mpesa for them to play a game. When Safari Sevens was running at a profitability, the money used to be sent to, the, to all the clubs in, in the country. Because Safari Sevens was a big money earner and it was self-sustaining and the money would go to the clubs. Now, the Kenya Rugby Union has got very little money that they send out to clubs, and uh, Safari Sevens has not made money since uh, 2014. I think in uh, 2017, they didn't even hold Safari Sevens. Last year, again, I'm reliably informed that they also made a loss of, I think, over five million, because it was not well attended. It didn't have a title sponsor. So this is a very good, um, what you call a good, very good property, Kenya Rugby, but it's been run badly, and we should seek to restore credibility, get the sponsors back in, get the fans back in, get the, get the, the rugby players trusting the union again, and everything will be okay. We have so much talent, but it's been run very badly. So we have got very good talent uh, on the field, but very bad or lack of talent on the board. So we are trying to restore that. It will be a challenge, but uh, I'm up to this challenge because I've been there before. I came in as a director in 2006 up to 2010. Again, we didn't have a lot of sponsors there, but we, we, we got in sponsors and I ran with a good team, the Sevens Outfit. So that's when we came in with the contracts, performance contracts and everything. So whatever they wanted, it was up to us to get. And then what we needed from the players and the playing unit was the results. So this we have done before. Okay. Now, uh, if you see, we have actually regressed from, the, from 2006 to 2010 and uh, after that. But in the, we, we were growing as a nation, okay? We got to two semi-finals of our World Cup Sevens in 2009 and in 2013. Last year, of course, uh, the performances were poor, but what did you expect? When the rest of the teams in the World, in the, in the, in the World Cup Sevens were training, the Kenyan players had not been paid and they were basically looking after their own welfare because they've got families and all that. So when other people are training and you are worried about your welfare, of course that's not an ideal situation. So of course uh, last year we did very poorly, okay? But what did we expect? We didn't expect miracles. Uh, miracles don't happen, really. It's hard work that gets results. So once we come in and uh, we get back in the sponsors, 
we have to talk to the players. You see, right now, there needs to be a conversation. But you see, the players lack uh, trust in the current union. So the current union, if I was right with what I had last week when uh, the chairman actually was speaking at them, not speaking to them, you should speak to people, not at them, okay? These are people, these young men and women have put their bodies on the line for this country and they're not getting the respect that they deserve. So when somebody is thinking about uh, where he's going to get his daily bread and somebody else, his competitor is training morning, evening, what do you expect? So I think that they've done pretty good with the little resources that they have. So I will not even criticize the Kenya Sevens players because they're in the face of adversity, they're doing pretty well. So of course now the senior players who have refused to sign the contracts. I think it's only in Kenya Rugby Union now that uh, when a player was making 150,000 shillings uh, monthly years ago, now in 2019 you want to pay them 45,000. I mean it doesn't make sense, okay? So the union has failed. The part of the players is to play and the directors of the union and the board are there to uh, do, do policy and to seek for sponsors. It's not the other way around. So one unit of the Kenya Rugby Union has failed, and that's the directorship. We have the talent, also in the coaching talent. Before we had, you know, uh, Mike Friday, Paul Tru, then we had our local coaches. And you can remember also in 2006, I had appointed Benjamin as a coach. Yes. So we have coaching talent, we have playing talent. So it's good that we're growing, um, you know, uh, capacity, we're capacity building. Um, some of these international coaches who came before actually were, the, the main plan was for them also to coach coaches so that uh, our coaches are up to a certain standard. So the transition, um, power has been dealt a hard hand because uh, he, he doesn't have the players that he, he wants, but uh, he'll, he's doing pretty well with what he has, you see, and he has next to nothing. So. Uh, he's a good coach. He's proven himself in the in the series, local series. Of course, his team has won so at the club level. So you would say if his performances there are, are, are good, then uh, he can, of course, take part uh, in the national team. And he was uh, Benjamin's vice uh, assistant coach. So I, there's nothing wrong with this. It's just that he doesn't have everything that he requires. Um, there's, I don't think there's an analyst now. You know, we had an analyst before. We had. Uh, nutritionists on board. Uh, we had our fitness and conditioning coach, strength and conditioning coach. Again, you see that um, the first choice uh, did, did not also sign the contract, Kimani. Yeah? But again, we have talent. So we have now our strength and conditioning coach, and these are local coaches. So um, it's good that we're building capacity, yeah? but we need to give the team more. The current leadership will give them a D minus, <laughs> and, that, and that is me being very generous. So they have failed. Basically, they have failed, and that's why we are running for this. We're not running for fun because this takes a lot of time, takes your resources, but we have a passion for this game, and uh, yes, we need to go back to A's, not D's. So yes, they have failed, and I'm not afraid to say it. They have failed. They have lost credibility. I think they're also lazy, they're not going out and actively looking for sponsors, they're not, you know, they're always fighting with the players. Of course, when, when things are burning at home, you're not going to be comfortable, but this uh, crop uh, is actually not doing much for the game, and it's time to make a big change. We're lucky as well that we have depth, but, and we have people who are passionate about the game, and they use their own resources, and friends of rugby who you know, send money and all that to them to run the programs. So otherwise, the union, I think, has failed, again, in development, and the only way you're going to get players now is if you start at the grassroots and, and uh, put resources into development. These are the players for the future. So we need these young boys and girls, you know, in a structured system that is supported, and there has to be, you know, um, defined pathways. So you see a kid who's playing, you know, community rugby, now he goes to high school, from there, now there's an age grade uh, rugby, which uh, I mean, it's not given any resources. And you know we're going to be hosting the under 20s in, in March. And uh, we have got good coaches, you know, Paul Odera is the head coach, passionate about the game, but he's not been given support by the union. So that has to change drastically.
it's all about the sponsorships and the, the partners coming in. Uh, these days, of course, uh, for, for sports to be sustainable, it's all about media rights. So instead of just also, you know, uh, depending on sponsors, sponsors come in when the product is being seen. So we have to make the game sexy again. We need to bring in the crowds. Uh, people need to be watching uh, the, the games on TV. And of course, platforms is not, uh, TV is, is not just on the wall now. The TV is on your phone, it's on your yes. iPad, it's everywhere. So that is what we need to exploit. Um, there's a deal that was signed uh, last year with one of the media partners here, but we need to exploit that fully. And that's the, that's the way we're going to bring in uh, sponsors. Yeah? If you see uh, what, what Sport Pesa has now gone into Formula One, yes, yeah. you see, and that's a new thing. And that's a lot of money. I think $8 million first year, 10 and $12 million the, the next year. So we have companies here that uh, have the money but they have no trust in, in, in the union. So we need to, that's a big thing, that's a main big thing, is to re restore credibility. And everybody will be back, the crowds will be back. You remember now in 2013, uh, Safari Servants had the biggest number of uh, spectators, 47,000, and that was the weekend of the terrorist incident at Westgate. And we still managed to get in 47,000 people paying, you know, uh, fans of the game coming in to watch over the weekend. So that was the biggest number ever. We need to get back to that. This term now is very important because now with the New Sports Act, the, the, the length of the, uh, of the tenure is four years. So if you make a mistake, you're stuck for four years and we'll just be complaining. So it's, uh, it's now time for the affiliates, you know, to say enough is enough. If they're happy with the state of affairs, and I doubt anybody is, uh, they can vote in an alternative candidate. But if they want progress, I'm offering myself for that. Um, we need to qualify for France uh, 2023. That will not happen. Uh, it's going to be hard work. What we did uh, before was also have the Kenya 15s uh, side playing in the Vodacom Cup in South Africa. And you see, that helped uh, the team a lot. We even beat Namibia in uh, Madagascar, and we had the luxury of losing by, I think, eight points or less, and we'd have made the World Cup in 2015. But we lost to Zimbabwe by, I think, 18 points. So we need to get back there. We need to have our team playing competitive rugby, test games, and hopefully now with the, with the good friends we have in rugby all across the world, including South Africa, we'll get Kenya 15s back to the Vodacom Cup, play high-quality rugby, and that's the only way. The only way you can improve is you play the game uh, more and more with better competition. You know, you lose a few games and all that, but you get better. So you need to play high quality rugby for us to improve. If you want to beat Namibia and be Africa's representative at the World Cup, you must be able to beat. And I was say this: you have to be able to beat Namibia in Namibia for you to say you're the best in Africa. So that's why we need to. Be. We need to be ambitious. We know that we have the talent. So we just need to get things straight and uh, let, let's be fair to rugby and be fair to the players. And let's get the best people in there, people with passion, people who will return the credibility to the game and we can move on forward from there.